Warning, the following video will contain spoil- Wait, what? We're not doing an episode review? Okay then, I guess I might as well start the video right now. So just sit back and enjoy. But before I begin, I would like to open up with a clip from the Miraculous Ladybug Los Angeles Comic Con panel in 2016. Really, Tiki? No one could ever turn a Miraculous Ladybug fan into something evil? Well, allow me to show you a Miraculous Ladybug fan turned into something evil. Oh, just be- oh, don't worry. Just because I'm kumatized doesn't really mean that I'm going to hurt you. I mean, you really haven't done anything wrong to me. You just to make me want to hurt you. Well, allow me to introduce myself. I am the Huntsman. Named as such because I hunt down those who have wronged me and make them pay for what they've done to me. Can I tell you a secret? I know who Ladybug and Cat Noir really are behind the mask. And I can reveal it to you if you want. As long as you're willing to believe me. Are you willing to believe me? No? Okay, fine. Whatever. Hey guys, ASLB here, and finally, after so long, I'm doing a cosplay overview of this particular OC, the Huntsman. Now, I've been meaning to make a video like this after Lady Wi-Fi just because, well, that episode drove me insane to the point that it would pretty much cause this to happen. Like, I felt like now would be a good time to finally bring, like, uh, give this character some spotlight. And I'm sorry if I'm stuttering here, this particular this particular, um, on-camera segments are unscripted, so I'm sorry if I'm mumbling like an idiot. Now, there are going to be four parts to this. Backstory on the creation of this OC, the creation of the cosplay, the cosplay itself, and my experiences. And if you want to know who exactly the Huntsman is and what he's like, I'll leave a link in the description that will lead to a miraculous fan and wiki article that I made for this OC. I'll also leave links for some of the materials that I use for this cosplay. Not all of them will be the exact one that I use, but they might get you better results. So with that said, let's begin with the backstory on the creation of this guy. Now the Huntsman originated as a roleplay character that I came up with on the spot. I have no idea how I managed to, like, settle on the Huntsman, but I came up with it on the spot, and originally he was called the Dark Huntsman, and it was, like, I changed it to the Huntsman for simplicity reasons. And I've done so many roleplays with the Huntsman that, it, that I compiled all of them into a fanfiction 
called Miraculous The Fall of Ladybug and Cat Noir. And if you guys haven't read that original fanfiction, I'll leave a link in the description below just so you can see the original story of the Huntsman. Fair warning, there is plenty of profanity in it. And spoiler warning, in case the title wasn't a big enough spoiler. The heroes die in this. This was in the early days. Now over the months, I did change a few things about the Huntsman, and I completely changed his story. Just so the heroes don't die, just to be more in line with the show, and just to be more in line with a few of my own personal experiences. Which lead into the creation of the cosplay. Now I originally was going to cosplay as the Huntsman for MomoCon 2016, but but due to time constraints, I wasn't able to do so. So I went in as myself. And I had a lot of fun dur like, during MomoCon 2016. I met a lot of people. I took a lot of pictures. I even went to an Undertale photo shoot. And I even went to the Miraculous Ladybug fan panel. Where they pretty much cosplayed as characters. And you get to ask the characters questions. So I decided that I would go up there and ask and try to reveal their identity. But as I've shown plenty of times, this happened. What if I were to tell you that Ladybug? Or next! I'll reveal their identity soon enough. To this day, that one moment still angers me. And of course I tried it again, but it didn't really work. They didn't even hear me. Oh, come on! So, after the panel, like when it was done, I went up to the cosplayers and I swore revenge. Like, they might have gotten away that time, but I will come back if they ever decide to go to Georgia again. And I thought that I was going to wait an entire year before that happened, but apparently, uh... And it was that moment that pretty much told me, okay, I think now is a good time to bring this OC to life, just to have my revenge against the duo. So after I finished watching every single episode in Season 1 of Miraculous, my mom and I got to work on the cosplay, and after two weeks of buying the materials and putting it all together, this entire cosplay was done, and on September 3rd, 2016, The Huntsman made its public debut at DragonCon 2016. And of course, that wouldn't be the end of it. Over the years, I would pretty much make improvements, pretty much fix some minor details, completely change different things about the cosplay and now it looks like this so because I suck at segways let's talk about the cosplay so to start off there is the bodysuit now I got the suit from Zentai Zentai.org a website that allows you to buy customized morph suits I got mine in black Obviously. And made sure the hands and hood were removed. Originally, we got a pre-made suit without the hood only, so my mom cut off the hands so the gloves wouldn't slip out, and ended up sewing some of the cape material to cover up my right wrist. As for the chest plate, we cut out some purple fabric into the shape of a chest plate, and sewn it on there. But not before painting the design on it. When the Huntsman was born, the design on his chest plate was painted by my mom in acrylic paint. While it wasn't terrible, it was a bit uneven and I felt like it could be done better. And it almost felt like the color was fading. So one day before I went on vacation, I decided to go over the design with some fabric paint. And the end result was this. It was really ugly, it was way too shiny, and it just didn't look good. So when Momocon was right around the corner, my mom and I decided to redo it, and the end result looks like this. Oh, and we also sewn on two Velcro squares just to go with the cape. The next part is the dragon scale cape, or reality. It's not really a dragon scale cape, it's more or less a... It's more resembling a fish scale. So, 
This is essentially a Yaya Han fabric that I got from Joann's and it's essentially a metallic purple. I originally thought about getting a like standard metallic purple fabric and sewing on some standard black fabric just to get this kind of effect, but when I saw this, I thought, okay, this has what I'm looking for, but will it fit? And so I decided, yeah, it'll it'll work. Then I got this uh, chain, and we pretty much sewn it onto a few, like, to a few of these loops. Sorry if that's very hard to see. And, well, when I first made this, it pretty much didn't even have these buttons, so... Like, when Halloween came around, we decided to get these large... Like, these large buttons that you're supposed to, uh, sew fabric onto and then clamp down with a few needles. We didn't really do the fabric parts, but when we, uh, like... And, as a result, when we pretty much clamped it down, you could actually see the marks, so... When Momocon was coming around, we decided to redo it and pretty much cover each particular, like, and decided to layer it with... with layer both of these with nail polish. And then color it in with a bit of a blue Sharpie and purple Sharpie. And we sewed these in... like, right underneath the loops. And it has this neat little effect. To be honest, this is probably the one part of the cosplay that I'm actually pretty proud of. And now for the gloves. Now these are just standard V for Vendetta gloves that I got online and they were really huge. So huge that my mom actually had to uh, sew in some elastic just so they could stay on my hand. And of course I cut off the cuffs of one of them and Went over both of the cuffs with some paint sharpie and regular sharpie. And as you can tell from this giant rip, these gloves suck. Which was why a new pair of gloves was made. Now as said before, these are just standard V for Vendetta gloves that I got from Halloween. And just to describe how they fit, well, they do fit a little bit better than the last gloves, but they're still kind of big, but they're nothing really to get worked up about. Like, yeah, and we pretty much took off the original cuffs and sewed these ones on. Then we kind of hemmed it a bit. And originally I covered, like, I covered the tips with just regular purple Sharpie, but then I decided to go this particular band route and, well, do each one of these in fabric paint and then Sharpie. Yeah, as you could see, the uh, sewing isn't really perfect, but it gets the job done. And just to answer questions, if you guys are even asking, yes, the cuffs are different sizes. I mostly did this to emphasize this particular one, the watch. Now, all we essentially did was t take a dummy watch and, well, remove the faceplate as well as some sort of metal thing that was in there and then super glue in some magnets. I took a photo of this particular uh, Akuma behind a uh, like pink plasma background that I personally made myself. Well, okay, I made the this particular image by myself and I printed it out on photo paper, put this in some clear resin and well, waited and then my dad had to put in some, like, put on a metal backing just so, uh, it can magnetically attach to it. So, yeah. There's the watch. And I unfortunately revealed the location of the Akuma. I am so screwed, aren't I? Now, next up are the boots. Now, I got these boots from a site called Phantasma. They're a Captain 100 black boots style and all I did to them was just color the top silver with uh, silver paint sharpie and it may be hard to notice on camera but one other detail that I added was I pretty much went crazy with the uh, black sharpie when adding 
like just when just trying to cover up certain uh, white splotches that managed to uh, seep, like that managed to uh, get onto here while I was trying to make this. So yeah, it was just to add a bit of detail and to cover up the uh, silver spots. Now, as you can see, it's seen better days, but I'm still kind of proud with, of this and I don't really plan on replacing it anytime soon. And I also tried to uh, color in the soul silver, but as you could see, it didn't really work out. So, yeah, those are the boots. Another thing to note is that because of the boot size, I actually have to wear work socks over the feet of this bodysuit just so it can, well, fit whenever I put them on. So, yeah. And now for the mask. Now, my sister was the one who designed the mask just to resemble the communication mask that commonly appears on the akumatized victim's head when Hawk Moth is trying to communicate to them. Now, I will say that I really do like the design. I really like how it like ended up. And my sister managed to create this mask first, but because she used regular acrylic paint on the liquid latex instead of mixing in the latex with the paint, it ended up being really crunchy and it just became uncomfortable. So I decided to make the mask from scratch and I'll leave a link in the description below just to show you the tutorial I used. And yeah. And I use the exact same method that that she uses to apply this on my face. I just apply some of this spirit gum onto my eyebrows if it'll focus. There you go. And then it'll cake, and then I'll cake the entire uh, mask in this spirit gum. And as for my eyes, I pretty much use this Ben I uh, cream, like black cream, just to, like on my eyelids before putting it on. So yeah, there's that. And then there's the belt. Now we essentially just took a piece of uh, like silver leather, the same one that we used for the cuffs and well, we pretty much sewed it together. Like we pretty much hemmed it right here and right here and then applied, well, these two little things just so it could uh, clamp onto each other. Like that. And then we made all these little pouches where like two of them detach easily, one of them is permanently sewn onto this. Just to show you the pouches themselves, here's the one for the net. Just give you guys a better look at how this was sewn. Here it is. And we just applied these little magnetic buttons to them just so they could uh, be secured. Ah. Sorry if I'm not really doing this like professionally. I've never really done a video like this. So here's the knife sheath pretty much. And I pretty much have this just to hold this knife in and it really doesn't do that good of a job. I'm willing to improve that at one point. I just don't know when. And we pretty much covered the inside with a sort of felt. And finally the box, we pretty much did the exact same thing and we had a little bit of a foam padding just to hold this box. But before we talk about the belt accessories, let's talk about the main weapon of the Huntsman, the Exodus. And yes, that is the actual tag sound. Confirmed. And I have no regrets. Oh boy, the Exodus. Now just to be real, this is an Ultra Saber's Dark Apprentice 
V3 SE hilt that I pretty much put in a uh, sound card just to, well, give it some sound. Originally, it was just a V2 Saber. In fact, I still have it with me. This is what it looked like. Just a regular V2 Saber. And I actually have the original blade that, well, that I gave to it. This was it. Just a regular lightsaber without any sounds. But seeing as I've improved, I now have this. And yeah, as for the sound font, I pretty much jury rigged this entire sound font and well, I pretty much took Shamim's uh, Kylo Ren sound font and his Ruinga sound font and kind of mashed them up into my own little uh, beast all together. And I even added a few extra little hints like the uh, ignition, like the deactivation. I kind of added a little sizzle effect just to kind of resemble it while well, fizzling out, just kind of being overheated. And of course the tag sound. I added that in because, well, it's my OC's theme song. I just had to. Confirm. And yes, there is a silent option. Now, as for the blade, this is a, a Ripper blade that was custom made. I looked online and saw this in one of Ripper blades, like, in one of Gary Ripper's videos and thought, okay, that is perfect for my OC. And so I decided to ask him for this. And I'll say it now, this is just perfect for me. Now there is one problem here. Well, it's not really a problem with the blade, but rather a problem I have personally. I broke it. Yeah, while playing with the saber, I ended up breaking the actual uh, blade right here. And I've been trying to, well, keep it held in with super glue, like, every single time that I, like, I never really use it that much, as, and, well, now I'm afraid of breaking it even more. So, I don't really use this for swinging, I only bring this to conventions, and I, and whenever I, uh, have to use, like, use it for, uh, duels, I always use... Well, one of these sabers just for swinging it. So, yeah, that's the Exodus. I hope to replace the blade if possible. And, well, that's all I have to say. And finally, there are the belt accessories. Here's the net that I uh, use to trap anybody that, well, gets in my way. All it is is just hot glue gun that I colored in with some purple sharpie. It isn't much, but I tried. Next up is the knife. Now, the knife was originally used to end the heroes, but over the years it's kind of grown a little bit less useful, so... But I still have it. Anyways, I pretty much just paint sharpied this entire hilt to be uh, silver and sharpied the blade two shades of purple and then it was clear coated just to, well, make it stay. As you can see, it doesn't really hold it that well, but whatever. You make do with what you got. Last but not least, the box containing both Ladybug and Cat Noir's Miraculouses. Now, my dad was the one who mostly created this. We uh, carved out, a, like we pretty much sliced an entire like block of wood in half. We pretty much shaved down like the top part just so it could be a little bit uh, more rounded than the bottom. We pretty much stained both of them and clear coated it. Well, okay, my dad also uh, 
etched in the uh, communication mask for Hawk Moth in here and I filled it in with fabric paint. Then we clear coated it and, well, hinged it with a hinge that only goes about halfway, almost. Then we pretty much took some of the, then we took some sort of sponge material and carved it out and then made sure that there was an indent for the ring and covered it with the same purple fabric used for the chest plate. And as for the miraculouses themselves, I got them off of, uh, well, my mom got them from Shapeways for the ring and, uh, Etsy for the, uh, earrings. And yeah, this is the one thing that I'm the most proud of. I'll leave it back to my, uh, on-camera self. Now, the box is probably my most prized possession in this entire cosplay. I mean, I hold this around like a talisman a lot of the time. I mean, I even hold it when I'm not cosplaying as a huntsman, mostly because it just means so much to me. I mean, it's just a satisfying thing to look at, just to know that I, like, I have these. I can't hold this open with these gloves. I mean, I have no idea. I am just crazy. But I'm not even crazy enough to own just these two. I'm much more than this. And so I'm recording this late just to bring you this. I have every single Miraculous in my possession. Volpinas, Hawk Moth, the Peacock, the Turtle, Queen Bee, and right there, Ladybug and Cat Noirs, Miraculous, nestled in their box, all mine. I mean, honestly, this took quite a, like, quite a few months. I really wasn't sure when I, like, if I would be able to do it, especially with the lack of, with the, uh, with the limited number of replicas of the B Miraculous, seriously, this was a one of this is a one of a kind Miraculous. But I am I am just so crazy. I've never been I've never been this crazy owning some jewelry before. And that's it. And I'm going over the microphone because well, the original recording was pretty cringy. And I just want to say to everybody, thank you so much for giving the Huntsman a lot of love. The amount of positive reactions this guy got from typical Miraculars to people who worked on the show, to the official Miraculous Ladybug Twitter account, it's just really nice to see that a lot of people managed to notice this guy and give him some respect. And to all of those people, I've just got to say, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry if this video took way too long. I'm not really that professional when it comes to cosplay overviews, but I hope that this video gave you a good idea on what the Huntsman is like and what it took to make this. Now as for my next review, I will be covering the Evilistrator. Then afterwards, I will have a look at Roger Cop and Dark Cupid. Then the next three reviews will have a few cameos, so be sure to stay tuned. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching, have a great life, stay miraculous, and this is ASLB, also known as the Huntsman, and I've got nothing else to say other than... See ya. And I guess while I'm at it, I might as well show you my saber skills. <laughs>